This question comes from Dr. Wine or Dr. W1NE. How do I get the player addicted to the game? How do you make the game replayable in the correct way? Correct way. I don't think you mean correct way as in the way you intend it as a game developer. I'm going to take correct way as not playing towards addictive tendencies. My reference to that would be you know, microtransactions or loot boxes or gambling type game loops. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's all about emotion. And I, I've said this before. It's if you can make uh, an emotional connection. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, I guess, how that, what that means in terms of the inner workings of the brain, right? You're, you're constantly giving stimuli. Uh, through this this medium of of game development, and it's it's sound, it's visuals, it's uh, narrative uh, experience. In some cases, it might even be uh, haptic, you know, with the vibration or, or movement. These are all um, inputs into our our brains as as people, as as human beings, that the 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 brain is taking, and and computing, figuring out, right? And when there are, are instances where the brain doesn't know something or doesn't understand something, but it can figure it out, that that's, the brain likes that a lot. Like it, we are problem solving beings. And when you're, you're making a, a game or an, an experience you're, it's this giant collection of problems to be solved. Now, not every game is, is you know, a puzzle game, right? You know, like a fighting game or, or a Souls game. You're, you're, the problem is, is not how do you move a block from point A to point B to get up to the, the ledge. It's how do I defeat this boss? Like it's a larger problem, but there are individual uh, problems within that. That could be, how do I dodge better? How do I, what, what uh, tactic do I use? Um, you know, what items do I need? These are all problems that the player is solving constantly. And when you're creating those problems as the game designer, and you are creating them in a way that the player can solve them, that is, to me, that's your game loop, right? That's the, the, the thing that, that makes your game a game. And so to, to make it addictive, you, you want the player to keep playing. Like you want them to, to want to solve those problems. And you can do that, you know, I, I think through a number of different ways. And games, I mean, there's so many different types of games and they all do it different ways, right? Uh, I think narrative is a huge thing that uh, can drive that caring. Like people want to care. People are very interested in stories. We tell stories. That's very ingrained in, in who we are, uh, again, as, as humans. And so having that, that narrative line to, to connect things and make people uh, relate to, to reflect themselves within the experience that they're playing. Um, but those, you know, if it's not a narrative game, maybe it's just a basic puzzle game, then it's finding, uh, the, the right pace. It's the, the rhythm of problem solving. That's going to make the player, uh, stay interested. Um, but also like want to, to finish. And there's, there's a, I say pacing because there's, there's a rhythm to that. Like you don't want to have something be super, super difficult in the beginning because, no one's going to hit that learning curve that quickly. I mean, maybe some people really like that learning curve, but for the most part, you're, you're, you're the middle of your bell curve. They're not going to be able to overcome that, that giant jump in difficulty from the, from the design point, it's figuring out what your, your loop is figuring out what that, that pattern of problem experiencing that problem, solving that problem, and then going on to the next, right? So the question of how, like, if, if I knew exactly how to do it, then I would have a lot of money. Um, it's, it's trial and error, and you don't know how people are going to react 
to whatever you're creating. And so that, again, that playtesting aspect is, is very important. Don't create in a vacuum. Um, allowing people to test and experience as you are developing so you can adjust and, and say, hey, you know what? Maybe this is a better way to do it. Maybe I can adjust it uh, according to all this feedback I'm getting and I'm going to get a better response uh, out of the player. If you can make people care and not frustrate them to the point, um, you know, it's, I don't want to make it sound Pavlovian because it's, it's really not, but there is that aspect of, you know, give and take a little bit. And you, you want to give them success. You want to give them encouragement. You want to give them uh, achievement and and how they're progressing through the game and you know add in elements of of surprise and and things like that but you you got to be mindful of you know how is the person playing my game are they going to be frustrated when they can't proceed and am i giving them enough to proceed and when they do proceed do they feel like they've actually achieved something i think if you can do that then you're, you're setting yourself up in the best way possible for them to positively uh, experience your game.